Your daily personal finance news bulletin Money Time is here and it's time to look at the news that matters to you. First up, we have something on inflation. The wholesale price index based inflation has fallen to a 21 month low of 5.85%. In October, the wholesale inflation was at 8.39%. The Commerce and Industry Ministry said today that the fall in rate of wholesale inflation in November 2022 is primarily due to the fall in prices of vegetables, fuel, manufactured items, textiles, chemicals, etc. In fact, inflation in food articles in November has fallen to as low as 1.07%. The inflation in vegetables was at, at a negative of 20.08%. Earlier this month, we saw retail inflation fall below the tolerance band of the RBI. Up next, we have something on FD rates. The HDFC Bank has hiked FD rates. Off late, a lot of banks have been hiking FD rates and HDFC too has once again hiked its FD rates. The private lender will give interest rate of as high as 7.0% on FDs of 15 months. Senior citizens will get 7.5% on this FD. Senior citizens will also get an interest rate of 7.75% on 5-year FD under the Senior Citizen Care FD scheme. This scheme is only open till March 31, 2023. Second based interest rates that citizens can get by opening an FD with HDFC Bank is 6.5%. But for this, they will have to open the FD for a minimum tenure of one year. Depositors can also get interest rate of 3% on the shortest tenure FD of just seven days. And with the Reserve Bank of India raising repo rates to 6.25%, several banks were expected to raise lending rates. After HDFC Bank and Canara Bank, Bank of Maharashtra has also announced hike in lending rates. The public sector lender has raised one year MCLR to 8.2%. The lending rates of the Bank of Maharashtra have been hiked by up to 30 basis points. The interest rates on various types of loans are tied up with one-year NCLR of banks. So, home loans, auto loans and other types of consumer loans of Bank of Maharashtra will also become further costlier. And now if you live in a non-metro city, you would be in for some good news. A ruling party MP has demanded parity in claiming HRA benefits in non-metro cities. MP Tejasvi Surya has urged Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to extend the benefit of claiming 50% salary as HRA to non-metro cities too. Currently, you are allowed to claim only 40% of your salary for HRA deductions if you live in a non-metro city. The 50% rule is applicable to only four cities, namely Delhi. Chennai, Kolkata and Mumbai. In all, all other non-metro cities, you can claim only 40%. But we have to wait and watch if this limit is raised in the budget. Up next, GST Council will not hike the GST on online games. GST and online gaming will remain the same at 18% for the time being. According to a tax official, the GST Council will not take up the issue of taxation of online games, casinos and horse racing in its upcoming meet on December 17, 2022. So, so for the time being, online games would continue to attract 18% GST. But the official also said that the group of ministers have reached a consensus to raise the GST to 28%. But since the GOM has not yet submitted its full report, it is unlikely that the matter will be taken up at the me December 17 meeting. Now, if you're living in Uttar Pradesh, you must watch this one out closely. The Yogi Adityanath government has rolled out incentives on timely payment of power bills in the state. You can lower your, your monthly electricity bills by 1% by paying it in advance. You can also file a complaint on the website of the UP Power Corporation Limited if you think your electricity distribution company has given you a faulty or counterfeited bill. A video is doing rounds on social media and in this video, CM Yogi Adityanath has himself explained various advantages of paying electricity bills on time. The Asian Development Bank has come out with its revised outlook for India and other developing nations in Asia. The international financial institution kept unchanged India's GDP forecast of 7% for the current fiscal year. 
but it said other developing nations in Asia will grow at weaker than previously expected pace. The financial institution said India would grow at even higher pace of just above 7% in the next financial year, that is in FY24. Although it has acknowledged that India's exports and IIP of consumer goods would remain under pressure in the current financial year. Manufacturing sector had also suffered a small contraction in the second quarter. And after the chaos at airports, the Civil Aviation Ministry seems to have taken some steps to decongest the airports. Now, passengers will get least wait time for boarding at checkpoints and entry gates. In recent weeks, there have been rising passenger complaints about long waiting hours at the airport. In a series of tweets, the ministry listed out the measures undertaken to curb congestion and waiting time at the IGIA. More CISF staff have been deployed, four X-ray machines have been added for baggage check, domestic security has been beefed up, count measures have been installed for crowd management and display boards have been installed at all departure entry gates. The ministry said that these steps have ensured decongestion and smooth flow of passengers at the country's largest airport. Up next, the Economic Times released a report stating brokerage view on the stock Colgate Palmolive. According to the report, exports have, experts have suggested that short-term traders can look to buy the stock for a possible target of 1,800 rupees for the next five to six weeks. Colgate Palmolive has given a breakout above the symmetrical triangle pattern on daily charts. The stock was trading well above crucial moving averages of 200 DMA. This was a positive sign for the bulls. The relative strength index is at 64.3. The MACD is above its central and signal line, which is a bullish indicator. Shitij Gandhi, senior technical analyst at SMC Global, also initiated a buy call on the stock with a stop loss of 1,560 rupees. On Wednesday, the stock closed more than 4% lower on BSC. It closed at 1,571 rupees. And we wrap up today's money time with some IPO updates. Financial services platform KFIN Technologies has announced details of its 1,500 crore rupee IPO. The three-day initial public offering will open on December 19. The public issue is 100% OFS, which means the company will not receive IPO proceeds. KFIN has fixed a price band of 347 to 366 rupees per share. Retail investors will be able to subscribe to 10% of the IPO size. They will be able to buy 40 shares in a single lot. KFIN Technologies is backed by General Atlantic and Kotak Mahindra Bank. The firm provides financial service platforms to AMCs. Out of the total 42 registered AMCs in the country, 21 AMCs are clients of KFIN Tech. The firm enjoys 59% market share in this sector. Well, that's all for today here on Money Time at Money9. Download the Money9 app to watch all the shows of 2 plus 2 equal to 5, Company Nama and Fino Money, the fintech show. Stay tuned to Money9 English's YouTube channel and see you again tomorrow at the same time. This is me, Ajay, signing off. Take care and good night.